do we have another bend gate on our hands? Get a divorce on Facebook and you won't believe the footage from a GoPro camera that was believed to have been lost for years. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. It's time for Twit's annual audience survey and we want to hear from you. Please visit twit.tv slash survey and let us know what you think. It only takes a few minutes, and your anonymous feedback will help us make Twit even better. We thank you so much for your continued support. Twit.tv slash survey. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 310 from Monday, April 6, 2015. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com, the online learning platform with over 3,000 on-demand video courses to help you strengthen your business, technology, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash T-N-2. Welcome back. I am Megan Maroney, and joining me today is Elise Hu, NPR's international correspondent in Seoul, South Korea. Welcome, Elise. Thank you, Megan. It's good to be back. How's it going over there? Um, it's a beautiful morning in Seoul. Excellent. Early morning. Thank you again for waking up early and coming to talk to us. Last week, you took a tour of Samsung. Uh, tell us about what it was like. Well, let's be clear. There's many Samsung <laughs> offices here in South Korea, considering this is a company that's incredibly diffuse. And here domestically, it includes selling insurance, um, having a big shipping company, trading financial services. Um, and so we actually visited the Gangnam office in Socho, uh, Sochodong, which is part of Gangnam, the big uh, area that has been made famous by Gangnam style. Um, and <laughs> there, I liked your tweet in, about that. You said that you were there and there wasn't as much style as you were right. been promised, right? They don't have their own style, I don't feel. But um, <laughs> anyway, so they actually have a, a much um, larger sort of future museum where they're predicting and they're doing a lot more R&D in a different part of um, South Korea. But here in the, the capital city of Seoul, they have several towers uh, in the Gangnam district. And uh, we visited with a team there and got to see um, the showroom. And um, uh, in fact, they have kind of a gift shop where you can buy <laughs> a lot of Samsung devices. And so it was actually great. Saw a lot of the new um, SUHD TVs that uh, they debuted at um, CES earlier this year, as well as, of course, the uh, Galaxy 6 um, phones. And so uh, Samsung's obviously, this is a critical moment for the company, um, especially with uh, quarterly their quarterly earnings dropping in the mobile division last quarter. So uh, it's, there's going to be a lot to watch here as these phones um, come off pre-order and get in the hands of consumers. Right. You said it's not available there yet. I mean, I just heard Leo ordered his and he's supposed to get it tomorrow. Um, but, you know, we've seen lots of reviews. It's certainly out in the hands of reviewers. So at this point, in terms of Samsung's mobile division, what's their real competition? Is there more coming from the Chinese smartphone makers or is there real competition at this point, Apple? We actually asked them about that, and Samsung is in this unfortunate position, right, of competing at the top of the market against Apple, which was really resurgent in the last quarter, and competing at the bottom of the market against Xiaomi and these other Chinese phone makers that are offering phones at a much lower price. And so Samsung kind of has to pick its um, pick its position and how it's going to compete. Uh, officials there that we spoke to actually said that their real focus is on emerging markets, which indicates that they're going to be competing. It seems as if they they're um, feeling more heat um, at the bottom of the market against Xiaomi and other um, Chinese phone makers, uh, especially because that's where the population is. That's where they're going to need to expand in order to grow. And so it'll be really interesting to see how well um, new phones that are arguably kind of um, up market and are more expensive to purchase will do um, when competing against uh, those the, the upstart Chinese phone makers. Right. I mean, of course, there's you know, Xiaomi is a, the big upstart. There was a Wall Street Journal piece today that was really interesting. They have this very unconventional, unconventional way of attracting customers. They were saying that they that Xiaomi will invite a lot of like middle class fans to VIP parties, at clubs, and um, it just and that that's how they're growing their their 
population. And as you say, like the, those are the people they want. They want the most people in the developing markets. Um, so are Samsung and Apple seen as elitist in Korea? Is that the feeling that you're getting? Well, certainly not in Korea. I mean, we have to remember here um, in Korea itself, uh, Samsung is uh, Samsung's major competitor is still Apple. I mean, among sort of, I guess, upper class Koreans, Apple does very well, and the iPhone did very well here, um, even in Samsung's own backyard. Um, and so, you know, this company is kind of almost almost akin to um, being institutionalized here in Korea. It's 20% of the Korean stock market and 4% of the country's GDP. 20% um, of all Korean exports are Samsung or related to Samsung. And so um, I don't get a sense that this is, that Samsung is a company that is seen as, you know, out of reach for average consumers, but it certainly is a force. And so um, how these phones will do here, especially as the release is, you know, has global attention, is going to be really interesting to watch in the next few weeks. All right. Well, you had an interesting piece. It wasn't tech related necessarily, but about Chinese, Chinese tourists and their influence in Korea. Um, and what are the big ways that things are changing as, as more Chinese tourists come to Korea? Well, Koreans obviously, or the Korean government obviously wants to take advantage of this big wave of Chinese tourism um, and the interest of the Chinese to come here to South Korea. It is, uh, at least as of last year, it was the top tourist destination for Chinese travelers outside Hong Kong, which is arguably part of China, though this is a political question, of course. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but so most Chinese uh, tourists come here for makeup and skincare products, um, and South Korea is trying to cater to them in more ways. Uh, my piece in particular was about how a lot of merchants are actually learning or cramming to learn uh, Mandarin Chinese in order to better sell products to the Chinese because they're just huge buyers of luxury goods. Um, and then also there's actually talk that the airport, uh, Incheon airport, which is the main airport in Seoul, um, or just outside of Seoul is going to try and create a wing just for Chinese tourists to help fast track them, get them into the city faster, uh, and get them through customs faster it's because, uh, the Koreans want the Chinese to spend their money here. Bottom line. Right. So uh, I heard a lot about bend gate over the weekend. Bend gate, of course, that was the problem with the iPhone that it would bend in your pocket. And a company called Square Trade just posted a bunch of videos of different smartphones bending and breaking under really high pressure, including the Galaxy S6. And then Samsung came out today really strongly saying, you know, this would never happen under normal circumstances. It was sort of an angry post that they posted on their website. What do you think about them coming out like this and defending themselves? It's, it's not necessarily the way the same way Apple would defend themselves in a situation like this. Right. And you have to remember Samsung, part of Samsung's strength or strength as a company today in 2015 is because it was just so bold and um, high spending in its marketing. Uh, in fact, the EVP of marketing who we met with last week talked about how they this, com this company spends a lot of money to get you to buy their products. Uh, in fact, more than, more than the rest of the smartphone makers. And so um, it wasn't a huge surprise that they would come out with this official statement and then this, uh, this three-pronged test of their own um, – that shows that this is not something that would happen in under normal circumstances. I think it's a way that um, Samsung wanted to get ahead of the problem and um, a show of how aggressive this company is about its own communications and its marketing. Um, when we met at Samsung, we were expecting this very informal meeting, but instead we got this top guy and four of his minion who sat there and did not speak and took notes of what he was saying. Um, all signs of just how buttoned up, uh, buttoned up Samsung is, how tightly controlled its communication strategy is. Um, in a way that it seems as if you're meeting with the White House, you know, or you're meeting with another government agency. And so, uh, in fact, the Washington Post last fall compared dealing with Samsung to dealing with North Korea, which is qu quite a bold statement, um, but a parallel that she used, the reporter used to indicate sort of um, how hierarchical and huge this company is um, and, and in a lot of ways opaque. Well, it will be interesting to see what happens next and when the phones actually get released and are in people's hands. So You're, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Elise. Elise Hugh is the uh, international correspondent for NPR in Seoul, and uh, we look forward to talking to you again sometime soon. Great. Thanks, Megan. See you later. Take care.
Coming up, Microsoft takes on Apple Pay, and Apple employees will pay less for an Apple Watch. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Lynda.com. Lynda.com is for problem solvers, for the curious, for people who want to make things happen. Maybe you want to develop an app, learn WordPress, boost your productivity, or sharpen your business skills. Lynda.com has everything you need to feed your curious mind. If you're ready to start taking better photos, you should check out lynda.com's Foundations of Photography and Photography 101 series. It has tutorials covering basics like composition, exposure, and more. They also have great courses on Photoshop, and they just released a first look at Photos for Mac, which is Apple's replacement for iPhoto and Aperture. With a lynda.com membership, you can stream thousands of video courses on demand, complete with transcripts, which allow you to follow along, or you can search for an answer and skip to that point in the video. Your lynda.com membership gives you unlimited access to training on hundreds of topics, all for one flat rate. Whether you're looking to become an expert, you're passionate about a hobby, or you just want to learn something new, visit lynda.com slash TN2 and sign up for your free 10-day trial. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash T-N-2. We thank them for their support. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. Last week, Microsoft announced that they'd be getting into the mobile payments game. At a conference, the Redmond giant detailed a tap-to-pay payment system like Apple Pay. It will reportedly use NFC and won't require a secure element on a SIM card. Today, Business Insider is reporting that at least one blogging sleuth uncovered a money transmitter license from the state of Idaho issued to Microsoft Payments Incorporated. This could mean that Microsoft's mobile payment system might be coming soon. Now in our Apple Watch Watch, 9 to 5 Mac is reporting that Tim Cook sent a company-wide memo today saying that all employees would get 50% off the Apple Watch aluminum sport and stainless steel models and $550 off the gold edition variations. In case you're curious, the same offer was not presented to tech news reporters who plan on breathlessly covering all the latest Apple Watch news leading up to Friday's try-on launch. And great news for those who like to live their entire lives on Facebook. Now you can serve divorce papers there, too. According to the New York Daily News, a Manhattan Supreme Court ruled that a woman who was having trouble contacting her husband could legally serve him divorce papers through a Facebook instant message. The judge did not say that the woman had to add one of those crying emoji stickers that come with Facebook Messenger, but I think it would be pretty cool and appropriate if she did. So you are walking in a field in Sweden and during, uh, and suddenly you come across an intact GoPro camera just sitting amongst the weeds. You take it home, you pull out the memory card and on it you find the last recorded video that highlights how the camera arrived in that field. It sounds a little like the Blair Witch Project, but it's so much cooler and less scary. Here's a story, a local skydiving club was out one day a few years ago, and during one of the jumps, the camera came loose from the mount, and then it fell about 10,000 feet to the ground, recording the entire way down where it survived. When a local man found the camera, they decided to post the video on YouTube in hopes of finding the camera's original owner, which they did. I hope you're not getting sick right now. And we, we get to see, they did find the owner of the camera. They all matched up and now we get to feel what it likes to what's what's what it's like to fall to earth it's i'm obviously feeling a little bit dizzy myself <laughs> and now for an email from you john from adelaide australia writes you were talking to roberto baldwin great guest by the way thank you i agree we were talking last week about streaming services you mentioned that you could upload taylor swift if you really wanted to to your google service to get around her dog in the manger attitude towards streaming services but you have a similar feature with the mobile servant version of Spotify. It can access your iTunes library. So if you have Taylor Swift in your iTunes, and I do, either by buying it, which I did, buying the CD and ripping it on iTunes, you can actually stream it through Spotify anyway. Thank you for that tip. I don't use Spotify, but someone might. I'm sure someone out there does. Uh, so uh, John also said he likes some independent artists. They're not on Spotify or iTunes. So what he does is rip the CD and bingo, there you are. And he's still, this is still him writing. Of course, I know that this sort of defeats the purpose of a streaming service where you don't actually have to buy the music per se. Thank you for your email. I love to get them with any kind of feedback. You can email me directly at megan at twit.tv. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write to us 
at Megan at twit.tv or at TN2 at twit.tv. You can also watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And send us your selfies if you've got them. We, you can send them. You can uh, post them on Twitter, Google, Instagram, or via email at TN2 at twit.tv. Use the hashtag TN2Selfie, and we will show your selfie on the show. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I am Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com. <laughs>